Landing on Mars is hard. Of all the space agencies that have tried to do it, only America, the Soviet Union and China have managed it successfully. America and China have both taken their landings a step further by operating rovers. They've used these to study in detail the red planet's rocks and its climate. So what happens when one of these rovers, NASA's Perseverance, comes across a rock formation that scientists reckon might contain a biosignature? I called up the person responsible for the mission to find out. So my name is Katie Stack Morgan, and I am the project scientist for the Mars 2020 Perseverance rover. So this is the most sophisticated scientific laboratory that's ever been sent to the surface of Mars. Take me through the highlights. What are the things that Perseverance is using to study the surface of Mars? Some of those instruments are for remote characterization of the rocks around it. So we have the SuperCam instrument that basically fires a laser at the surface of Mars from the mast of the rover uh, and can analyze the composition of rocks without actually ever touching the surface. Uh, but then we have instruments on the rover's turret or arm uh, that actually come very close to touching the surface. And these are our kind of up close and personal observations. And there are two instruments on the arm, Pixel and Sherlock, that do really high levels of detail, spatial mapping of both the composition of the rocks and soils we look at, but also whether they have organics and then how those minerals and organics and, and elements are spatially arranged on the surface. And that's really important for making a case for a possible biosignature. Uh, if and when we find them. We have a ground penetrating radar um, to see into the subsurface of, of Mars. Uh, first time ever sending that kind of instrument on a rover and that's to help us understand the geologic context of the observations we make at the surface. Let, let's move on to the most recent um, finding then for, that, was, that was published last week. NASA's acting administrator Sean Duffy talked about how the recent findings from Mars were the closest anyone's ever come to discovering ancient life on Mars. I mean, let's be clear, this is not a discovery of life on Mars, but tell me about what the sample was, how you found it, and, and then what the analysis you did with it was. Yes, yeah, so the, this is the Sapphire Canyon sample. Uh, also, we, we call it Chayava Falls. That was the initial target the rover first looked at. And, and these rocks are located in one of those river valleys that are coming into the crater. So once carried uh, sediment by rushing rivers into the crater, and it was there near that boundary that we had an opportunity to use our proximity science instruments as Pixel and Sherlock. And when we got the data down, and it was kind of a run of the mill plan, actually, we got the data down, we were like, whoa, what are these things? <laughs> and just to be clear, this is this is a, the, 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 the rocks you were looking at were a sort of mudstone um, in the distance. Um, just describe what they look like. It's a, a bright, light toned outcrop kind of sitting there in the river channel. So. You know, it's it, it looks interesting, but there's not too much you can say about Nothing it just from the orbiter it. images. Yeah, no, not really, other than us thinking, okay, well, this could be an important place to test some scientific hypotheses. It wasn't until we got the proximity science instruments on the arm onto the outcrop that I think we really understood how special this rock was. So this, this unremarkable looking rock that you got close to on, with Perseverance, and, and, and you got the proximity uh, instruments, to, so the, the spectroscopes and all of that, and, and to, to look at what minerals were actually in place. Describe for me what the interesting patterns were. Yes, yeah, so we saw two types of features at a very small scale. And for lack of a better term, we came up with very kind of colloquial names for them, just based on what they look like to us as, as Earth humans. Um, the first were what we called poppy seeds. Um, these were just little dark specks uh, scattered throughout the rock. Um, in the cameras, they actually show up as kind of a dark greenish blue color. And it turns out that those are composed of a mineral vivianite, which honestly, I had never heard about <laughs> uh, before we discovered this. You know, it's, it's a mineral that folks know here on Earth, but I had never personally encountered this before. Um, so we have the poppy seeds made of these little vivianite clusters. And then at the Chiava Falls rock, we found what looked like leopard spots. And we called them leopard spots because amongst this reddish mudstone, there were these white cores surrounded by these dark rings. Uh, and it really looked a lot like leopard spots. 
And so two types of, of features, but we think it's similar chemistry going on to form both of these, but especially the leopard spots provided great evidence for the chemistry and possibly the biology that might be behind these features. So what, what makes these two, these two features, the leopard spots and the, and the poppy seeds, what makes them interesting as potential biosignatures rather than just you know, weathering or other chemical reactions that might be going on on the surface of Mars? So these kinds of minerals form when you have water present, you have iron present, and you have organics present. And again, these are reactions that happen on Earth. Um, we do believe they can happen without the presence of life. However, here on Earth, this kind of chemistry is almost always microbiology mediated. Uh, but at the same time, you know, we are doing the due diligence to go through the other ways, alternative ways these can form without the presence of life. But the reason why we find a potential biological origin so compelling is because these non-biological origins just aren't that great of a fit given what we know about the rock. So it's certainly elevating the possibility that life was involved. Now, I don't have to tell you that um, that one has to be cautious when claiming anything is potentially um, uh, l l has an origin that, that, that could be related to life. I just wonder at what point did you in the discussions with your colleagues around the world actually think to yourself, we're going to publish a paper that raises this possibility. So the, the idea that there might be a biological origin behind these features happened a couple of weeks after we first discovered them. So this is summer of 2024. Um, we heard from the, the, the leaders of the Pixel team who have familiarity with some of these features here on Earth. And then at the end of July, uh, we had just gotten back some new data showing that there were strong organics signals in the rocks. We were all gathered together here in Pasadena, California for a science team meeting. So we had most of our team members in person in the room. And we actually took a heads down on the desk, eyes closed, hands up vote um, for whether the team thought that we had a potential biosignature. Now, of course, I got to see because <laughs> I, I was didn't the have one to who keep asked your the eyes question. Closed. <laughs> no, I did not have to keep my eyes closed. But it was I, I felt such a thrill when I saw the hands going up around the room. And, you know, it, the, our team of scientists are also skeptics about life on Mars. And, you know, we're all trained to be very careful about this. So it really was exciting to see our team believe that this discovery might have involved life. And so it was really exciting this past week when that paper came out peer reviewed uh, with the statement that these features could have a possible biological origin. So what are the next steps then? I mean, you, Perseverance has very sophisticated equipment to sort of look at these mineral deposits and, and identify things and look at the structure of the surface and where the minerals are on, on a piece of rock. But it, it's not it's not going to be con, it's not going to be able to confirm one way or another whether this came from life or not. So what happens next in terms of d deciding that question? The rover's payload was designed to bring us up to the level of do we have a potential biosignature? But it wasn't necessarily designed to conclusively answer that question. That's something that needs to be answered here in laboratories on Earth where we have very sensitive uh, scientific instruments and equipment. So we've got to get these rocks back to Earth to answer that question. I wonder what you think the chances are that um, these samples will ever come back to Earth. Yeah, well, it's it's hard to, to make a guess. Uh, you know, I, I think the... In terms of the job that we have to do on the rover team and, and the science, the Mars science community, I think we have made a very strong and compelling case that, that these rocks need to be brought back home. And so, you know, we have heard that, uh, you know, it reflected in the budget request um, that the Mars sample return program uh, has, has been zeroed out. Uh, we're hopeful and, and there's there's discussion in Congress that support for that may be coming back in some way. There are, you know, I think NASA is exploring different ways f to to make Mars sample return work, you know, faster and and for a lower price point. And so I'm hopeful that those conversations will continue and continue in a positive direction that will help us bring these samples home. What would it mean to you, Katie, to answer the question about whether or not life has ever existed on Mars and, spe and specifically if Perseverance was the machine that sort of helped with that? You know, I don't even think I can wrap my mind around it. <laughs> you know, to 
every day I come in, I, you know, we want to do the best work for the rover. We want to study the most interesting and exciting rocks. And, you know, on a, from a day-to-day -day basis, I don't often have a chance to st stand back and think about the significance of, of what we do uh, in that kind of a way. You know, I mean, talk about a life accomplishment, right? I mean, that would just be incredible. So, you know, it's it's something that I, I don't often think at, at, at that level. Um, but if, if that was my contribution to humanity, you know, I think I would I would leave this earth a happy person. I think that's a fair statement. Katie, thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much. If you enjoyed listening to this, you can hear more about the challenge of returning a rock from Mars to a laboratory on Earth by clicking on the link in the description below.